All right, so here we are in the purple Xfinity car, the car I've waited the entire career mode to get. We got it two races before the end of the NASCAR Heat Evolution career mode. So let's make the most of it. We started 14th here at Phoenix. Uh, we're falling through the field just a little bit here as we get down the back straightaway, which is going to be the front straightaway. Uh, pretty soon at Phoenix and a big dive down to the inside of Carl Edwards and Clint Boyer. Again, if you didn't already know, we're locked into the chase, so no problems there. But what we're racing for is prize money to buy a CNC machine before we get to Homestead, which will give us some horsepower advantage. Of course, really, we don't have to worry about that too much because uh, we have a guaranteed $100,000 from our good sponsor, Xfinity so we don't even have to worry about that. So pretty much, it's just get used to the purple machine, the purple Xfinity Toyota, the car I have been so craving, so craving to drive this whole uh, Let's Play, and just making the most of it, getting used to it, and ready for the battle at Homestead. Of course, Jimmy Johnson won the last race uh, at Texas. I tried to hold him off. I just couldn't do it. And he's leading once again here at Phoenix as we get into the back of Casey Kane. And couldn't quite get around him there. We're actually surprisingly competitive for Phoenix. Uh, running up here in 13th place. And generally on short tracks like this, I have a, I have a lot more trouble. But it seems like this, uh, this Audi Xfinity uh, 36 purple car doing pretty good right now. And turn three is definitely my best corner. We can really slide it in there. Get into Kane just a little bit. Help, ha have him help us turn. And now we're going to get up behind Redneck Jesus here. I won't be able to call him that too much longer. Well, I guess he's going to be in heat two. That was close. That was really close. I, I, I kind of Scandinavian flicked into the corner, and I did it way too early, and I almost killed myself on the inside wall. Thankfully, I didn't do that. And we're going to continue on. Dale Jr. gets up into the outside wall just a little bit, interestingly enough, as we're going to stay here on the yellow line, as the inside line is always, or not always, but most of the time, especially in NASCAR Heat, the best place to go. And we are just struggling right now getting into turn one. The car is really positive, turning in quite a bit. And I'm just not anticipating it enough. And I'm just sliding toward the inside wall. So let's try not to do that this time. We get here into turn three, kind of doing the uh, the uh, Loudon thing where I'm kind of sliding the car into the corner. Uh, but, uh, well, we're going to battle with Ryan Newman and Kyle Larson here. Those are two guys who were paddling for the lead in the uh, spring race in real life here. And now we're going to move around the outside. Can't quite clear Larson. We really need to be on the bottom. And In fact, Ryan Newman is going to get to the inside of Larson as well. But we may be able to get underneath both of them here in turn three, get the car. Wow, that is just absolutely cutting the course. Uh, of course, cutting penalty, anybody? Anybody? No? Okay. And I tried to slide up in front of Larson. Looks like we were able to do it just. And this time, we finally get into turn one. Stay on the bottom and don't almost clobber the inside wall. So that's all good. So we can start making our way back up through the field here. Hopefully up to Ryan Newman. It seems like he is very fast though right now. So he may be one of our prime competitors here in the mid-pack. Again, it's all about the prize money today. Many positions as we can make up. It's all good. All what we need. This race pays a million dollars to win. So uh, clearly there's a lot of money on the line. Especially at the front positions. Uh, I took over a home over a million bucks uh, for the uh, uh, second place I took at Texas uh, when, when all the sponsorship uh, requirements were met. Ironically, I didn't lead the most laps of the races. I almost put it in the inside wall again. Uh, and that was another one of the requirements. Johnson led like one more lap than I did. And it took that sponsorship requirement away from me. So theoretically, I could have gotten the CNC machine for this race. But Jimmy Johnson led the most laps in the chase. What a shocker. And I think he's doing the same thing today as we finally clear Ryan Newman in turn three and now set off in pursuit of Redneck Jesus, a.k.a. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Can we get 
Oh, that's a little too hard on the brakes there. Car kind of slid out just a little bit. Uh, Matt Kenseth looking like he may try to pass me, but not quite. So we're going to chase Dale Earnhardt Jr. here into turn three. This is my best corner, so let's see if we can get anything done here. Nope, car just kind of moving around just a little bit. We did gain on Kenseth, so that's all we need to do. And I just would like to point out that I think Phoenix is one of the best uh, modeled tracks in the whole game. It, it's really one of the best looking graphically uh, tracks, and I think the frame rate's actually pretty good at this track as well. Uh, it, it seems like just very smooth. It's probably because it's a short track. There's not a lot to model because it's a desert. But uh, I definitely think this is the, one of the nicer looking tracks in NASCAR Heat so far. We'll see what the new tracks look like uh, when we get on them in less than a week at this point. As we try to get around the outside of Dale Earnhardt Jr., not quite going to get there. I think after I finish this uh, season, which of course after this we only have one race to go at Homestead, I think I will do a stream, uh, a kind of a send-off to NASCAR Heat Evolution if I can get it to work. I'm a little bit worried about my streaming capabilities. I'm going to try to get an Elgato gaming capture thing. I think that's better for streaming anyway, uh, but it's kind of hard to find one of those for a decent price. Uh, also, I got a Logitech G29 racing wheel, which is coming in the mail at some point. It actually is scheduled to be here on September 12th when Heat uh, 2 comes out. So I might actually be uh, starting Halo. to do videos Halo. with a wheel. Uh, that's why I'm kind of holding off on an F1 Let's Play because I kind of want to do that for sure with a wheel uh, and then some certainly Project Cars too uh, with uh, doing an IndyCar series, a modern IndyCar series that will definitely be with the wheel. But we'll see how it is with NASCAR Heat 2 otherwise I might just stick with the Xbox controller. But uh, yeah, I think that's all of the updates to go. But yeah, the stream. I think I'm going to be doing a stream. Probably it will be online, doing some online races. Uh, a couple days before Heat Evolution comes, or uh, Heat 2 comes out. And then if I buy Heat 2 early, like on the digital download thing. The yellow's oh, out. There we go, a yellow. We'll hold that thought. Uh, am I going to pit? Yeah, I think I will. I think I will because of the fact that uh, we've only got 13 laps left of fuel. I think I'm going to try to leapfrog the leaders as they all have to pit. So anyway, yeah, the stream. So, like I was saying, I think it's going to be an all-online thing. Uh, and then for Heat 2, uh, if I buy it on, uh, like, the release night digitally, rather than going to the store and buying it, uh, I think I'll stream, assuming it doesn't take too long to download, I think I'll stream when it, uh, when it comes out. I know people like my streams, so um, hopefully I will be able to... You know what, I might actually do it on release night instead. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, uh, JJ or Dave Reagan. I'm not thinking about, I'm thinking about streaming and I just wrecked uh, Dave Reagan. But yeah, on release night I think I'll stream it. Uh, now that I think about it. Uh, because I want to spend the whole day recording and uploading videos in heat. So it'll be an early start for me in the morning, for sure, going out and getting heat, or just downloading it digitally. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. Uh, the disadvantage of downloading it digitally is it takes, like, twice as long. So you know, that's what I did with F1 2016. It literally took, like, 12 hours to download the whole thing. And that was no bueno, no bueno. So I kind of want to not do that this time around, especially because I want to get videos out as quickly as possible, and uh, as much as I'd like to pull an all-nighter, I don't necessarily want to do that, but then again, you know, let me know your opinions in the comments of what I should do, or how you guys are going to do it, uh, I didn't pre-order anything, I don't think it's really that important to get the Kurt Busch crash car as we get way down, way, way down below the... Uh, yellow line there. That was way too low. We get passed by a couple cars that uh, had pitted, so we better get around them for sure. Hi, McFlurry. Yeah. Um, yeah, just let me know in the comments what uh, what you guys would like to see uh, for the heat release day. 
Filler. And I'll try to provide that content. Because I know there's going to be a lot of people making videos about Heat 2. But obviously, you know, I'm one of the bigger guys who talks about it and does videos. Uh, so, you know, obviously I have a bit of advantage there that people are going to probably watch my career mode. <laughs> You know, versus like the you know 50 other people that are going to be trying to start career modes that day. We're kind of like it's kind of like a, a a light version of the F1 YouTubers. It's like yeah, you know the guys who who will be doing it, uh, and you know the guys who you want to watch. I know a couple of guys. What if racing and Kamikaze games? I'm definitely going to be watching those guys' uh, uh, videos on Halo. race day because uh, I trust their opinions and they're entertaining to watch. So we're just trying to get Almarola, and obviously Jeff. I can never say Fabianco, uh, but I've already been watching his videos because somehow he gets the game. Early. It's almost like he does promotional work for uh, 704 Games, and he gets the game early. What a shocker! Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I would like uh, 704 at some point. Uh, selfishly, of course, this is very selfish for me to say, but uh, I'd love it if they, you know, hooked a few of us. Of the bigger YouTubers up, or uh, you know, do what F1 does, and, uh, and or do what Codemasters does, and kind of bring us all in, uh, kind of the big guys in the community, and, uh, and uh, give, give some feedback on the game. That would be cool. There is there is a suggestion, uh, and also send me free copy, please. Send me free early copy, please. Also, I just realized my car looks exactly like Denny Hamlin's. Like, it's even got the orange stripe. Oh, oh well. I guess we're like a Gibbs-affiliated car now. So we've got Comcast sponsorship. Well, we had that before, but... Uh, Comcast sponsorship and uh, purple and orange car. That's a Toyota. I guess I bought it from Joe Gibbs or something. Well, we're moving up the field quite nicely. We're already all the way up to 17th. I'm assuming everybody's going to have to pit at some point pretty soon. And there they go. Speak of the devil, they're in the pit. 17 laps of fuel remaining. Probably I'll be able to uh, stretch it a bit further. On these tracks where there's a lot of lifting, generally I'm able to do that. A three-wide move down the inside of Paul Menard and Kyle Larson and get around them both. That's pretty cool right there. Not going to lie. And here we go into turn three. As you heard, car ahead is pitting. Oh, I thought it would be Austin Dillon, and I tried to run up behind him, and I couldn't quite get around him, but we're going to move up quite a ways in the order, all the way up to fourth, so we're battling for third with Austin Dillon, and the leader is, I believe, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. So, uh, good for Stenhouse. He screwed uh, Larson out of a win here uh, this spring, but uh, I guess he gets to lead in NASCAR Heat and Evolution. The leader is coming into the pits. And there goes the rest of them, so we're going to pick up the lead here. And the second place car is Jamie McFlurry. So let's see if we can hold off McFlurry for as long as we can as we slide her down into turn number one here. Pretty decent uh, corner, I have to say, there. It was really smooth. Oh, that's not going to be smooth. I almost hit the wall. They did not cut the dog leg at all, and that uh, definitely almost really caught me out there. So McFlurry closing in just a little bit. He got two tenths, and now that's going to be a lot of tenths because I caught the wall. McFlurry goes through. We're going to take the lead back here into turn one. Now well, it's going to be a duel with McFlurry, and we're just going to block him. Move up the track just a little bit. Now go down into the cheater line and move ahead of McFlurry. Get the car right down on the flat of the track. And now try to screw him off the corner, which we, I think, was a, were able to do. Yes, and uh, that's going to allow Casey Kane up into the mix. Whoa, as we got a little bit of a slide going on there. Actually, that's Jimmy Johnson trying to unlap himself as McFlurry goes through into the lead. And Jimmy the Juggernaut, boink, uh, puts me in the wall. Thanks, Jimmy. I appreciate that. Let's see how bad the damage is. Not too bad, thankfully. So can, can Jimmy, like, get blocked by McFlurry? That would be really nice. And then uh, Kevin Harvick, who is always fast in Phoenix, he's trying to get into the chase, and I think if he finishes second, he will be able to do that pretty easily. But there is some lap traffic coming out of the pit, so hopefully that will slow Johnson and McFlurry up just a little bit so I can get back up there and uh, fight with them. 
And indeed, it is the 23 car, which I spun out earlier, David Reagan. So maybe David Reagan is going to uh, pay it forward and help us out a little bit, uh, even though I uh, spun him out earlier. So down into turn number one, car sliding the rear just a little bit. McFlurry was looking to the inside of Reagan, not going to be able to make it stick, and now uh, Harvick's going to unlap himself from us. Not a lot I can do about that. But except for drive down to the inside and pass him back. And then park on the apex. Turn four, but he's going to sneak back to the inside. Carl Edwards tried, but could not get around. Wow, that, oh, that was it. Oh, boy, that's... Uh, well, that was exactly what I thought was going to happen, but we may have screwed a lot of people. We're going to pit, repair the car, get back out there. So, looks like a lot of cars got the wave around. Oh, of course, I can't check how many cars got the wave around. But we're still just restarting in seven, despite absolutely dying in a crash. Uh, but uh, everybody's really slow on the restart, which uh, is a little bit interesting. McFlurry is back here, so McFlurry came into the pitch, but we've got, once again, a very interesting uh, front of the field with Landon Castle, retired Scott, Trevor Bain, and then Martin Truex and Casey Kane. That's a little bit more realistic, even though Casey Kane maybe not so much. As we get right down next to the white or yellow line. What are the colors, David? Third place. Now going for second. I'm going for first, says Tom Quellen. That was a Murray Walker quote. Nobody got that reference. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're going to get uh, down, try to get down here into turn number three. Whoa, that Still is there. a big dive. Bounce off of Truex. And got around him, so now we're going to chase down Case Kane here. They're all on old tires, too, which is going to play into my advantage just a little bit. And I'm pretty sure Hamlin's in the pits again. So poor Denny Hamlin, uh, he cannot catch a break this chase. That's the second race in a row that he has been stricken by mechanical issues. As we get around the outside, hopefully, of Truex. And it's not going to work. Truex is going to hold tight on the bottom. And we're just going to grab uh, some draft here. But here comes Edwards. But I think Edwards is a lap down because retired Scott is running in fourth. So where the heck are the cars that got the wave around? Did they just go to the back? That's a very strange. But anyway, let's see if we can get to the inside of Truex here. Down into turn number three. Right down next to the yellow line. And can we get off at the corner nicely? It's going to be tight next to the wall, but we managed to pull it off. Here comes Edwards. This is a mirror image of the crash we had just earlier, just laps earlier. Thankfully, everybody got through it okay. It looks like Edwards is going to have a really good run, but I was able to block him. That was a bit cheeky, for sure. But we managed to hold it together. Now we get down on the flat of the apron, trying to chase down Kane here. And Edwards is coming. He game is lagging something fierce so there's the yellow we're gonna stay out we're gonna stay in the lead and hopefully be able to start pulling away so we're ready to go in the lead McFlurry next to us Johnson behind Let's see how this is going to go. Green is out. Racing. McFlurry gets a much better start. Funny, they uh, didn't get off the line quite as badly as retired Scott did. So McFlurry goes to the lead. The car is all over the, or not all over the place, but very, very tight off of turn number one. And, okay, Harvick. Well, Harvick's AI is realistic for the chase. He uh, definitely driving with no... Uh, no regrets, that's for sure. Very high commitment. As we get down here into turn number one on the throttle, we're going to take a little bit of an unconventional line. Try to get a draft down the back side of the course. Not going to quite get there. Maybe if we can get into turn number three. Oh, yeah, that's going to be quite nice. Can we get all the way around, though? Ryan Blaney side by side. 
Can move up the track on him? No, not quite. Still there. Down into turn number one. That car is just dancing all over the place into turn one. It's going to allow Logano down to the inside. He's going to make that pass. We're going to dive to the inside. Maybe take fourth place this time. Wow, I really bullied Logano there. Can I get all the way around? Can I get all the way around? Right on the yellow line. And off of the corner we go. And down the main stretch. Once again, doing okay -okay so far. Maybe a little too hard going there into turn one. And that actually allows Legato to close in just a little bit. McFlurry, Harvick, and Johnson still out in front. Got to close in just a little bit here in three and four. Got to be so patient through this corner, though. Because uh, if you get on the throttle too early, you're right out into the wall in turn four. Likewise for turn one, but uh, the patience needs to come at the entry. As you saw there, I got a little bit loose. So we're going to dive it down underneath the yellow line, back out onto the back straightaway. So in turn three, just get the car down into the corner. Lift off. That was a pretty decent line right there, nice and low. 24 laps to go. We're probably going to have to pit again, which is a bit obnoxious. In fact, we're for sure going to have to pit again. We're 10 laps short. May have been a bad strategy, but I think everybody needs to pit again. So, you know, if everybody needs to pit again, we're essentially fourth on the track. Anyway, as McFlurry, Harvick, and Johnson just absolutely hammering on each other. I'd love it if they wrecked each other. That would be amazing, but it doesn't look like right now they're going to grant my wish. Fourth place wouldn't be a bad finish, for sure. And I don't know if McFlurry is in the chase contention or not. I think he is still. I know he made the chase, because he, he uh, always seems to win races in NASCAR Heat Evolution. Despite the fact that I don't remember the last time McFlurry had a win. Like, uh, 2010? <laughs> it's been a while. We get down the main straightaway here. And it breaks just a little bit. Maybe a little too much. The car really wanted to dive down into the corner there, but I was like, it's a little too early for that. So let's really take a nice cheat through there. And drift into turn number three. Get right down next, under the white line, or the yellow line, next to the white line. There we go, we're getting it right. The color blindness for some reason that I have for these uh, lines on the track is beginning to cure itself as still Johnson maintains a 1.2 second gap we're just not close enough to get that next extra second there because that was a little too ambitious going into turn number three but we'll see what we actually gain here to gain anything uh, no and that certainly is not going to gain anything because getting up in the wall is uh, no bueno as we get way out of the groove once again now I'm a little bit of uh, worried about Kurt Busch sneaking in here and uh, spoiling everything. Get down here once again next to the yellow line. Try to be as patient as possible on the throttle. We're going to do pretty good coming off. Yeah, decent. Didn't really gain anything, but didn't really lose anything. I guess that's a net positive, or at least a neutral. As we get through turn number two, still three cars out in front. I'd love some lap traffic right now. Don't think we're going to get it as Johnson makes the bid down to the inside of Harvick as we just absolutely slide into turn number three. No doubt about it, that was a drift. That was a dirt tracking at its finest. 18 laps to go. Pretty sure we'll have to start thinking about fuel here in a bit. That's for sure. Well, 10 laps of fuel. How many laps to go? Like 18? I don't remember exactly how many laps to go. We could stretch it, possibly. I'm probably sounding really stupid now because I forgot the amount of laps to go. We get right down next to the white line that time, under the yellow line, but here comes Kurt Busch. No, 17 laps to go. But, uh, yeah, at least we'll be able to possibly short fill the car. Let's take a look at the uh, 
tire wear. Yeah, we could just do right sides. Right sides and uh, a can of fuel, I think, will get us to the end. No problem. As Kurt Busch tries to get to the outside. Car high. Gonna do a little bit of wheel banging here. Nope, not gonna work because here comes flying Ryan Newman underneath. And Ricky Stenhouse. So they all get around and uh, past me. Let's take a look here. The leaderboard. So we dive to the inside of Newman, just slam into him. Still there. Car high. That's for that's for taking out Larson or beating Larson. In fact, everybody uh, that was involved in that finish is here except for Larson. As we absolutely Halo. drift, the absolute nonsense out of the car, going into turn number one, couldn't quite Halo. clear everybody. Still now there. we're going to try to cut the corner around Newman, which we did. Now side by side, bounce off each other, slide into turn number three, and there you go. Now all of this nonsense has Awkward. definitely allowed McFlurry uh, to gain, but it looks like Stenhouse is in the pits, and Johnson, Johnson and Stenhouse in the pits. And Ryan Newman just absolutely tried to wreck me right there. He didn't uh, succeed though, and now we're catching Mr. Jimmy the Juggernaut right now. So off into turn number three. So when's McFlurry gonna come in? Well, there's more pit stops occurring. We've got six laps left of fuel, 13 laps to go. So certainly, it's definitely looking a lot more like we're going to be able to short fill the car for sure Carlo. going into the pits, or coming out of the pits, I should say. So we drift the car on its used tires. Stenhouse comes in. We're really struggling for pace right now. I think that's Keselowski. Yes, it is indeed for a position. Just try to keep him behind me as best I can. It looks like right now pretty good. 5.6 is the gap to McFlurry. He has checked out so far. Or right now, I shouldn't say, so far. He is checking out. Current present tense. And here comes Kyle Busch down to the inside. And Kyle Busch with a very sad looking rear end. Uh, you need to do some crunches, dude. Not crunches, uh, squats. Kyle Busch needs to squat as we get right up into the wall. And that's going to allow Keselowski and Bush through as well as Carl Edwards. Car high. And dive it down to the inside. Can we make it stick? Three laps of fuel remaining. And still no McFlurry in the pits. Still there. Well, it's probably now time to come in. Ten laps to go. I feel like I should stretch it because if if the yellow does come out for some There's reason, we need to stay on the racetrack. Let's take a look at the tire wear. Wow, it's really bad right now. 31%. Good grief, that is no bueno. All right, we're coming in. I've decided to make an executive decision that we are coming in the pits. Okay, two tires stop, one can of fuel, and no adjustments. So you got to hope these guys go fast. Certainly looks like they're going fast. Come on, let's go. That was fantastic. Good pit work. So down to 26th place we go. That's not amazing, but the pit work was good. But I think we've gotten some rubber banding. Car ahead is big. So here come the stops, and the car is feeling really good on these fresh tires. That is for certain. And how many positions are we going to gain here? All the way up to 23rd. We're chasing down the third place Kane right now. I think Carl Edwards just came out of the pits ahead of us, so naturally he is faster. But can we pass Kane? Is he going to come into the pits? I don't think so, but Kurt Busch certainly did. And Kurt Busch is two, three seconds ahead now with seven laps to go. Well, if Casey Kane Gets third because he uh, did a better strategy than us. Good for him, but we just unlapped ourselves from him. 
Now time to chase down Curtin Bush if we can. Also Austin Dillon, Landon Castle. A lot of guys ahead of us. Two pass, and now Kane comes into the pit. So it looks like everybody's going to have to pit one more time. We've got 15 laps of fuel. I don't even have to look at that. Five anymore. laps to go. Five laps to go. I probably could have done a half can of fuel and uh, gotten out even quicker on that one. So we're up to 20th. And now we're starting to chase down Kurt Bush, who we were racing with earlier, for the fifth position. So uh, you can assume that uh, we were in the fifth position, essentially on track, once the pit stops cycle through, if the pit stops completely cycle through, of course. If uh, nobody else, or if somebody else has some crazy strategy, uh, I'll kind of be a, at the mercy of that. But we're actually starting to catch Landon Castle here, but it looks like he's already a lap car, or possibly a lap ahead. I haven't seen the number yet of the position that he is in, but he is not on the leaderboard. 37th, yeah, that is a very much a lap car, so get out of my way, Landon Castle. Miller. And if I could just use the rubber banding here to my advantage, I could catch Kurt Busch. But Landon Castle is not going to let that happen, because he is just going to drive so incredibly slowly that's going to allow Ryan Newman to catch up to the back of me. And actually, well, Castle just ran into the back of Martin Truex for no reason. You're all clear. Starlo. Now trying to drive around the outside. Castle gets out of the way finally. Thanks, bud. Clearly. Wish he would have done that earlier. So around the inside of Castle. And now trying to chase down Martin Truex here for the 12th position as we absolutely drift into turn number one. But we need to stay ahead of Ryan Newman because... Seems like the rubber banding is off and we're at, we are racing hard here for all we're worth right now. And dive down to the inside. Can we get Truex? We got the bumper of Truex and we got a yellow. Ooh, that is going to be, uh, that is going to mix things up for sure. Well, we need a really good restart here and to not get run over here as well on the restart. So green, white, checker. Here we go. There's a green flag. And we've got two laps to settle it. We get a nice little love tap from Casey Kane. Or give a love tap to Casey Kane and actually get a little bit further up the grid than I would have expected to on the restart. And use some oh boy, sorry Stenhouse. Uh oh. Yeah, <laughs> three wide alright. Well I was a bit of exuberant. That seems to have not worked. Look at... <laughs> Are we going to get a yellow at some point for any of this? No, I guess not. Well, we had to do that one more time, I guess. We certainly cannot do that at Homestead. That is for certain. But we got pre pushed all the way down the back straight, or the main straightaway at Phoenix. We're still only going to come 25th. It's actually not as bad as you would have thought it would be. As we slide her down into turn number three for the last time. And right down next to the yellow line. Off of the corner. That's Phoenix. Done right, and we'll dusted. 25th. And we're going to go to Homestead regardless. So 25th. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a finish. Poor Danny Hamlin. 39th. Uh, McFlurry won. So I guess McFlurry is in the final round of the chase. Unless he got knocked out already which I don't remember. Let's find out, shall we? Uh, so, uh, the winnings, still almost 500 grand for finishing 25th, and we get 600 grand, uh, or almost 600 grand uh, from this race despite finishing 25th, and yes, Mick Fleury uh, managed to make it into the chase. We fall to third in the standings, but it really doesn't matter. It's the, uh, the first person across the line that wins the chase. Uh, and Logano in fourth place only one point behind me which is interesting uh, despite the fact that he never had a win so there is your final four Johnson McFlurry me and Logano so let's head back to the race shop buy a CNC machine and see if there's anything else to take a look at before Homestead so from Phoenix we go into the championship decider at Homestead Miami Speedway and as you can see we advanced to the final round so Anything else to take a look at? No. So, for the team, 
can't, we could buy a fabrication shop, but that does literally nothing. But uh, a CNC programmer gives us 4.1% horsepower. That's what we need to do. I guess we're buying it from Haas. Haas CNC. We'll give, uh, uh, I almost said Carl Haas. Uh, no, that is not Carl Haas. Uh, we'll give, uh, what the heck is that guy's name? Oh, well. The Haas guy. You know who, who he is. Uh, he, you know, runs the Stuart Haas team and runs the uh, Haas F1 team. Don't remember his name for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, or at least his first name. No, his last name. It's on the, it's on the thing. But anyway, uh, let's take a look here at the Chase Grid. There you go. So, the points are even Stevens. It's going to be between myself, Johnson, Logano, and McFlurry. I definitely say that uh, Johnson and McFlurry are the guys that are really going to be the challenge. Though, uh, you know, Logano could always surprise. It's going to be a very interesting race. Hope to see you guys there for the finale of not only this season of NASCAR Heat, but I believe NASCAR Heat Evolution in general as we move on to NASCAR Heat 2. So thank you guys so much for watching. One video to go. Can we take the championship?